So in the context of uh, the Buddhist teachings, we have these uh, 31 realms, right? And so the very lower realms are the hell realms. And within those hell realms, there are different kinds of sub-hells. So depending upon you know, what, what you've done, you'll go to a certain kind of hell. And there's, there's hot hells, there's no warm hells, there's hot hells, or there's cold hells. And there's all kinds of disgusting things that happen in those hellish realms. And uh, Yama over there is the one who's like the, he's the, he's the concierge, the, recep uh, the, re the receptionist of hell. You go there and uh, he just writes down who you are and everything. All right, this is where you check in. Right. He doesn't judge what you did. He just says, did you, did you see this? Did you see that? And you say no. And he says, well, didn't you see old age? Didn't you see death? Didn't you see what happens when you get punished? And you say, yes, I did. Well, that was your message. You, obviously, you didn't get the message. That's why you're here. So here I check you in here. So that's the hell realms. Above that is the, is the hungry ghost realms. So the hungry ghost realms are those beings who are hungry all the time. They're just all, they're never satisfied and they have a lot of suffering and there's nothing they can do about it. And they have different ways of, uh, there's different hungry ghost, uh, different ways you can see a hungry ghost, let's say. I mean, there's different forms. And usually what happens is they have like this very, very small craning neck and a pinhole for a mouth and really huge bellies, but they're never satisfied. And so you have to look at it from the idea that there, there are physical realms, but also psychological. So think about a psychological state of a hungry ghost. You have everything you need, but you're still hungry for more. You're never satisfied. And above that is the animal realms. So those are all of the animals we see here in this realm. Above that is the human. So the three lower realms, those are, the, those are the realms of unhappy destinations. Now above the humans, there are the six sensual heavens. There's the uh, Tavatimsa, Tusita, uh, well then there's the, uh, the realm of the four great kings, which is right below Tavatimsa. So the realm of the four great kings, that's where all of the things that you hear in legends, you know, dragons and fairies and leprechauns and genies and all of these magical creatures and things like that. That's where they kind of reside, if you will. And the f four great kings basically preside over that realm. And above that, you have the Tavatimsa, the gods of the 33, where Saka is the leader. You have Tusita, where the present Bodhisattva is there. The Buddha to become is there right now, just chilling out with his buddies. And then above that, you know, you have the other sensual heavens related to other things that you've done in your life, which have been, you know, beneficial for you and beneficial for others. So now, again, the Deva mindset is a mindset that keeps its precepts, is generous, is compassionate, is forgiving, is patient, is loving and kind, and so on. If you have that kind of a psychology, then you're already said to have heaven on earth in that sense. So you have a Deva kind of mentality. Now above that, you have the different Brahma Lokas. So each Brahma Loka is associated with a jhana. The first jhana is related with the Brahmas and the Mahabrahmas. And then the second jhana is related to the Abhasara beings. The third jhana is related to the Subhakina beings. The fourth jhana is related to the, the, the fourth jhana. Actually, the fourth jhana realm also has the pure abodes. So some of the Anagamis and you know, Arahats who wore Anagamis there and then became Arahats live there. And out of that, there's a subset of the pure abodes, which are five pure abodes. And then there's the realm of the unconscious beings. And then above that, there is the formless realms related to infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception nor non-perception. So these are basically just a good su summary of all of the realms that are there. And they also have to do with their psychology, right? You can still experience those realms depending upon whether you're in jhana or whether you're in a certain kind of psychological state. Isn't the animal realm, there's a hierarchy too, right? Like not all animals are equal or? Well, I mean, you think about the animals we have here, they got a pretty good life. 
Sukha and Duke and uh, <laughs> Sukha especially. I mean, look at him. <laughs> right. So there are some animals who are well tended for, well cared for, and there are some animals who live in the wilderness, and it's just a really terrible place to be in, terrible state to be in. Yeah, those, those, so some people, you know, they think that it's there below the human realms, but it's actually just below the Tavatimsa. So those are the Asuras. They are, they're always in, in rivalry with the, the gods of the, gods of the 33. So Saka and the Asuras are always fighting. This is the idea. It says like they are not continuous suffering, but it's suffering Asuras. Yeah, they have some suffering. So, you know, people who still are generous, people who are still uh, compassionate, people who still have their precepts, but they still have some defilements in them, like jealousy or anger and things like that, they could get into that state of the Asura. So it's, it's a mix. And then there are some beings, like Yama, right, the king, the daytime he's living in his celestial mansions in the Deva realm, and the nighttime he has to, well, actually, rather, his day job is being the manager of hell. And then he goes back to his palace in the night, and he comes back. So you have mixed karma there as well. Some beings experience being hungry ghosts for some time, and then go into the celestial palaces and come back as hungry ghosts. So it's not always so clear cut, this whole process of karma. The Asuras actually are underwater. The yeah, yeah, they're underwater. So they, because they fell from Tawatimsa and they resided into. They're like the modern day understanding of the Titans, the gods who took over or were taken over by. <laughs> yeah, and what I'll also say is actually they're very similar to the cosmology of the Egyptians and the Greeks and the Romans and the Vikings as well. Like Saka, for example, who is the king of the gods in the 33. It's very similar to Zeus, very similar to Indra in Hinduism, who wields the thunderbolt, or who is very similar to uh, Thor, the Norse, god, the Norse god Thor. So, you know, whether they're real or not, I mean, the, the idea is that they, they, they are present both as psychological states as well as outside of our experience here. Yeah. Right. The Mahabrahma, he thought that he was the creator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, so he had a lot of conceit and the idea is that, you know, he fell into this particular Brahma Loka and he was the first one there and he's like, oh, what, what's going on over here? And then he thinks, maybe I should have some friends, maybe I should have some more people here and other people pop up there and he thinks that because he thought that, he created them into existence. So these are the ideas about the Brahma Loka.